My name is Amanda Herman, and I'm an artist who works with individuals to create films, photographs, and public events that address complex social issues. My projects often reenact memory, mixing fact and fiction to tell stories of survival and transformation. But most recently, I've been focusing on what people wish could happen, on their dreams. Dreams have the potential to shift the way we see the world and to imagine our future. Most remain unrealized. After all, there are limits, right? At least we believe that there are. Some limits are self or socially constructed. But what is it to make someone else's dream come true? It's an intervention, a liberation from these constructs, and hopefully, it inspires a reevaluation of what is possible. So I'm not a traditional studio-based artist. Instead, I spend time collaborating with people to transform their ideas into public art projects. This often involves encouraging people to do things they would otherwise not do, like <laughs> dressing up in a wizard costume, <laughs> or acting out a dramatic death scene on a frozen lake in the middle of Sweden's coldest winter, or building a six-foot replica of the Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> or being Vanna White for the day. These images are from the two projects I'm going to tell you about today. Each project uses art, collaboration, and performance differently to realize the dreams of two remarkably different and remarkably wonderful individuals. Both projects examine the human experience and use imagination as their foundation. Saad Mohaldin is an Iraqi refugee living in Sweden. He dreamed of traveling back in time to show his son the prosperous pre-war history of Iraq. So together, we wrote and produced a science fiction film that did just that. Adam Goodwin, an artist with developmental disabilities, dreamt of being a game show host, which inspired us to build a set, recruit contestants, and stage a live show. But first, let me back up and explain how I got into the art of dream making. I spent many years leading participatory photo projects in San Francisco, such as Fostering Art, a photography and creative writing program for foster youth. For one project, I asked the students to imagine themselves as superheroes with powers that would allow them to change the world in the way they desired. Watching the students complete the project, I was struck by how they all chose powers that drew directly from strengths they already had. I found that enacting an impossible idea gave the students hope and confidence. Then, in graduate school, I completed my first experimental documentary film based on memories and dreams. When Hurricane Katrina hit in August 2005, I was transfixed and then horrified by the events that took place. So I decided to make a series of projects over the next two years about the people who fled to California after the storm. I focused primarily on the Morris family, made up of 11 members spanning three generations. When the hurricane hit, the family was separated for a period of three weeks. I met Letitia Morris and her family days after they were finally reunited in Oakland. I became their family's official, unofficial photographer, documenting their first year adjusting to their new lives. Then, I made a short film that focused on each family member's journey from New Orleans and the resulting trauma they had experienced. Letitia was my creative partner. We developed an untraditional approach to making the film. We made the audio by, I asked them to make lost and found lists. They, they wrote the lists and then I recorded them reading them aloud for the, for the camera. The visuals focused on their personal experiences. We reenacted the family's members' most vivid memories from the storm. The film examined the multiple ways the storm had impacted each member of the family in their interior and exterior lives and their memories and hopes for the future. I found that using dreams as the basis of telling a difficult story works. It's private and intimate, and the audience is compelled to listen. And importantly, the dreamer plays the lead role. So I used this model for the project I introduced to you earlier, The Making of Talzar. 
It was a multi-year exchange with Saad Mohaldin, an Iraqi refugee who escaped to Sweden during the first Gulf War. I arrived in Sweden during the winter of 2007 at the height of the U.S. war in Iraq. That year and next, Sweden granted protection status to more Iraqis than in all other EU states combined. I was in Gothenburg as a visiting artist at the Volland School of Fine Arts. Gothenburg is a very segregated city. Living in its outer suburbs are primarily immigrants, immigrants from the Middle East, Africa, and Eastern Europe, while the inner city houses mostly white Swedes. I was intrigued by this and wanted to learn more about the refugees' experiences in Gothenburg. So the university directed me to Saad, who was working as a teacher in Sweden's immigrant integration program. During our first meeting, Saad and I talked for hours. I told him about my work with the Katrina survivors. We discussed the politics of the Iraq war. He told me about his childhood growing up in Baghdad and his position as a civil engineer for the city. He had fallen in love with a woman from, an opposite, from the opposite ethnic group. They were shunned by both of their families and soon after, he was forced into Saddam's army. After multiple attempts, he finally escaped, and he told me of the tragedy of their newborn son's birth in a war-torn hospital during the Gulf War's bombing of Baghdad. And he told me of their harrowing escape to Sweden and of his first son's eventual death in their new home. He spoke of being a part of a lost generation of refugees, torn from his cultural roots and unable to assimilate or be ex accepted into his new cultural environment. And he told me about Talzar. For 10 years, Saad had been developing a story about his dislocating experience as a refugee. It was an allegorical science fiction story. There was an alternative universe complete with characters, plots, and planets. He had made maps and sketches of places. He had a loose plot involving time travel, war, and the search for peace, all based on his real life. After hearing about my project with the Katrina survivors, he asked me to help him work on his story and complete it. So we began by trying to write the story from beginning to end. We developed characters, costume designs, and worked on the plot. The project evolved over the course of three summers. The final film is similar to a making of short. It entwines scenes from Saad's fictional story with interviews about his real life experiences. Briefly, the story has three main characters, Talzar, a wizard, who is played by Saad, his son, Narsin, who is Saad's son, and Lana, a character from the future who's based loosely on myself. <laughs> the countries on planet Zoral are at war. Talzar is in exile, but he longs to teach his son about the proud history of his home country. So with the help of Lana, the three travel back and forth in time with the goal of combining knowledge from the past with the technology of the future to negotiate a truce between the warring countries. I recruited a team of people to help me make Saad's story come alive. I collaborated with artists and designers to create props, music, and special effects for the film. A product designer friend helped me develop this prototype of Lana's futuristic time travel machine. I hired a composer to make an original soundtrack for the film and a Swedish artist to work on special effects. Iraqi artist Haki Yassim drew character sketches and designed Talzar's magical necklace. And later I asked a jeweler to create the object. And we filmed scenes from the story in Berihun, the suburb of Gothenburg where Saad lives. I recruited Saad's friends and family to act in the film. This is Esther. She played Azra, who is Talzar's wife in the movie and is unfortunately murdered in the first scene. And she also plays his mother in the final scene when the characters travel back in time. Saad's son plays Talzar's son in the film. And I worked with an illustrator to draw scenes from the story that we couldn't recreate. During an exhibition of this project in Gothenburg two years ago, Saad told me that seeing the completed film was a dream come true for him. He felt that our collaborative art project allowed him to communicate part of his experience as a refugee. And most importantly, the fantastical nature of the story allowed those in his adopted city to learn about his life. Sharing his dream created an access for others to learn about his experience. I'm committed to building these creative entryways. 
The more people enter into lives that are otherwise ignored or misunderstood, the better. It is often the unknowing that builds barriers and fear between people. It's amazing to watch what happens when you invite someone to be part of a personal dream and then make it public. This is exactly what we did with the second project I'm here to tell you about, the Wheel of Fortune. I was an artist in residence at Riverside Industries, a nonprofit in East Hampton that supports people with developmental disabilities through job training, classes, and art pro programs. I started by speaking with Riverside's incredible art teacher, Denise Herzog. She told me that adults with disabilities spend most of their time working on the day-to-day -day requirements of living. There was little space for dreaming of the future. Then she introduced me to Adam Goodwin. I asked him what or who he would like to be if nothing stood in his way. He answered immediately that he'd like to be Pat Sajak, host of the Wheel of Fortune game show. He told me, the reason why I want to be Pat Sajak is because he's been there a long time. I want to see how it feels to be in his shoes for a day. I don't want to be a contestant, because if I saw Vanna White in person, I'd literally pass out and have a heart attack. <laughs> Sometimes Pat is funny and cocky. I want to replace him. I want to tell him, sorry, Pat, your time is up. It's my turn. So for a year, we worked together to make his dream a reality. First, we held auditions for contestants. Adam planned each test puzzle, and using a miniature wheel that he'd built before we met, he conducted the auditions, making sure the potential participants had the zest and talent to appear on stage. Working with a team, Adam wrote a script for the live show and created a set of puzzles, complete with special prizes like trips to tropical islands. Adam is a virtual encyclopedia of the history of the Wheel of Fortune, and his vast knowledge was called upon as he worked on every detail of this recreation. Adam designed the set for the stage, including a six-foot functional wheel built for free by local carpenter Oliver Hatch. The wheel and each letter of the multiple puzzles were hand-painted by Adam and other Riverside clients in a set design class led by Denise. We held auditions for Havana White and recruited local radio celebrity Monty Belmonte to play the part of our announcer, the famous Charlie O'Donnell. A local thrift store provided us with period costumes for Van and Pat. Adam was born in the 80s, and some of his earliest memories were watching the show with his grandmother, so he wanted the show to have a distinctly 80s feel. Finally, we staged the show for a live audience at the Eric Carle Museum last year. Adam dazzled the audience. Pre-show nerves melted away as he burst onto the stage and seemed to truly embody his role as Pat Sajak, joking with Charlie in the audience, challenging the contestants, spinning the giant wheel, and bantering with Vanna White. The Wheel of Fortune project placed value on the dream of an artist with disabilities and offered a rare opportunity to make his dream come true. I wanted to show an intimate, creative, joyful, and deeply human side of Adam and his community, a side that people outside of it are really able to see. Both projects allow me to build relationships with incredible people I would never have otherwise met. And each project created a temporary community brought together by making something unique, surprising, and deeply meaningful. I can confidently say that the outcome of each project was joy. Biggest and brightest, perhaps, for Saad and Adam, but that joy spread to every person involved. What's possible and impossible in the world is largely a social construct. It's up to us, as a community, to redefine what is possible. And sometimes, that's all we need inspiration to dream big and then make it happen together. <laughs>